Liz Shaw here with Blue Farmhouse Music, sitting on the farmhouse porch swing and picking while the birds are singing. Um, and I think it's cause the evening is cooling off really nice. So we're having our own little concert out here. But you know, it occurred to me that I had promised to put up a tutorial on how to tune the banjo. As a banjo teacher, I often hear students say, I'm just confused about how to tune and I'm so afraid I'm gonna break a string and I don't understand how to get from one key to the next. And um, there's really an easy way to think about this. Yes, there are a lot of banjo tunings, more than I know, but we gravitate towards five in old time music. And if you will tune in a certain order, they just naturally go into the next one. So we're gonna start with open G. And it's a G because I've tuned the strings to equal a G chord. So that's why it's called open G. And the notes of a G chord are, I'm gonna check my snark to make sure I'm still in tune, and I am. The first string is a D. The next string is a B. The next string is your G. And the last string, the fourth string, is another D. Actually, our last string is this little short guy, the fifth string, and it's another G. So we've made a G chord by just tuning to a G chord. Now, the next key that if you want to just go sequentially and make this easy for yourself is to go to A. So you take a capo, you don't put it on the first fret because that would be G sharp and the fiddlers would all leave and I wouldn't blame them because I'm also a fiddler, but we put it on the second fret, a banjo capo, we want that size. And you notice that there's not a capo touching the fifth string. So when Lynn made this banjo for me, he installed a little railroad spike and that acts like a capo, a little model railroad spike is what we use. And I have to adjust it a little bit, it's supposed to be an A. And there it is. So what I just did was I just raised the strings by using the capo and hooking the fifth. So this is now tuned in A and the, the notes of an A chord are A, C sharp, E. So let's see where they line up. There's my E. And when you put a capo on, you sometimes have to adjust the tuning a little bit. There's the E, first string. Next string is C sharp. Have to adjust it a little bit. Next string is A. And my fourth string, oops, A won't go, there it is. Fourth string is another E. And my fifth is the A. And I can play the same fingering as I play in G. I'll play the little Cripple Creek riff again. Didn't change fingerings or anything, just great. Just pop a capo on, hook the fifth, you got it. Adjust your tunings a little bit. Now the next tuning I go to is called sawmill or mountain minor or modal tuning. And you just have to move one string, one half step. I go to my second string and I raise it from the C sharp for the A tuning to a D. That's a half step. Just barely move it. See how different that sounds? neither major nor minor, it's, it's modal, which is a whole nother tutorial about understanding modes. But let me play a little bit in this key and you can hear how it sounds. I just love the tuning. Uh, it just has such a, oh, I don't know, uh, a real um, mysterious sound almost. Now the next tuning that folks like to go to is drop D. All I do is go to my fourth string, which is right now an E, and I'm gonna drop it to a D, hence the name. And this is a popular D tuning. I'll be honest and say I don't play in this tuning very much. I have another D tuning I prefer. But a lot of people like this tuning. My fifth string is not going to cooperate. I'm 
just adjusting the strings, not changing any letters. This is still E, this is still D. There's the culprit. That's still A when, he, when it's cooperating. And there's D. a D chord because it's not. This E does not belong in a D chord. What belongs in a D chord is F sharp, which lives right here. So if I put my finger there, I can make a D chord. I prefer to do what we call open D and tune that sucker up to F sharp <laughs> rather than putting my finger there and worrying about it. Now this is where sometimes people break a string and you can break it going up or coming down because I've got to go from E to F sharp. That's a whole step. But these strings are made to take it. And I, I usually never break a string doing this. It's usually they're old and that's why they broke. So now I'm in open D. And that does put a lot of pressure on the neck. It might cause things to just wave a little bit, like t t tightening that string that high may make things just be a little wobbly. So you do have to, when you change tunings, it's just not a foregone conclusion that you just change the one string. You do have to fine tune the others because just changing tunings moves the bridge a little more, puts pressure on the instrument. So just know that that's something you always have to do is fine tune a little bit. I still don't have it. sloppy but you get the idea see how it rings really high that first string being that high is going to give a lot of um, banjo ringing sound that people have come to love about banjos all right so that's that's the tuning tutorial you just see you're just adjusting one string at a time uh, or in the case of G to A you just slap a capo on and adjust this little fifth string so um, if you uh, will just take it in those steps uh, in that order, I think you'll be fine with it. And um, I have, I will leave you with a banjo joke. Um, what is the difference between a banjo and a Harley? You can tune a Harley. Okay. So now I think I need to practice the Swiss before breakfast a little more because uh, that sounded a little rough. So I'll see you guys around. I got to get back to work.